Welcome to this lesson on using percents. Today we're going to talk about how to use those percentages that we've been working with. So how to find the percentage when we're given a part and a whole. So kind of like when you take a test, you get your part, which is the number of questions you got correct, out of your whole, which is the total number of questions. And then you use that to find a percentage. Or you can work it backwards. So if you know your percentage and you know how many questions there were on the test, you can figure out how many you got right or how many points you got. Um, if you know how many points you got and you know your percentage, you can also find the total number of points on the test. So we can really take these pieces and work them together in different ways to help us find different parts of information. Now I can really tell you that you are going to be using percentages throughout the rest of your life, especially if you go shopping, I mean, Kohl's department store, all the time, 30% off, 15% off, 20% off, just anything like that, if you're going to any type of store, is going to have discounts and things that are going to involve percentages. Or in sales, if you go into sales, you could get a percentage of commission. So this is really important that you understand how to work with these different pieces and that you take your time and identify those pieces and really get a good understanding of what you're working with before trying to cut corners and take shortcuts. All right, so first we're going to work with Brother Pat. And Brother Pat has 300 friends, and 10% of those friends have blue feathers. And we want to know how many friends have blue feathers and how many friends do not have blue feathers. So again, we highlight our question, which is, how many friends have blue feathers and how many do not have blue feathers? We're also going to go ahead and underline important words here. So we want to know two things. We want to know how many do not and how many do have blue feathers. Okay, so the important numbers here in this case, 10% is going to be important. And it's important to know that 10% have. Now that's not the answer to our question. We know that 10% of the friends have blue feathers, but we want to know what number that is. So what does, how many does 10% represent? And it's important to know that he has 300 friends. So that is also important. So now previously we talked about how percent means per 100. So in this case, if I have 10%, that would be 10 out of 100. So if I go through here, I know that out of this set of 100 right here that I'm looking at, 10 of those friends are going to have blue feathers. Out of this next set of 100, 10 are going to have blue feathers. And out of this next set of 100, 10 are going to have blue feathers. So when I look at this, I can look and see, okay, well, this is 10, 10, and 10. So out of those 300 friends, 10% is equal to 30. Oops, I'm running out of space here, so let me try that again. I'll write it over here instead. There we go. So this is a picture version of what's going on here. So again, I can look at each of these boxes and say, okay, if I look at it just as per 100, and since there's three sets of 100 in each of those sets, 10 of them are going to have blue feathers. So in this case, there's 10, 20, 30. So I know that 30 of his friends have blue feathers. So I can write that in a sentence. 30 of Pat's friends have blue feathers. But now we also have to remember that we want to know how many of his friends do not have blue feathers. Well, in this case, it's fairly simple. If he has 300 friends, and we know that 30 of them have blue feathers, if we subtract we know that we get 270. So the remaining 270 do not have blue feathers. 
So 30 of Pat's friends have blue feathers and 270 of Pat's friends do not have blue feathers. Okay, so this is just a real simple way of looking at how we work with percentages and what percentages mean. We're going to get more into equations and proportions with it, but if you can get a visual of what's going on, that usually helps us understand a little bit better that in this case, yes, 10% does equal 10 out of every 100, but it's 10% out of 300. So what's happening here is there's three sets of 100. So you have to look at it out of those 300. You can't just look at it as a 10 because we're not just talking about 100. Okay, so in our tape diagram, here's a second way that you can look at this and get a visual of it. So this is really important to discuss our parts, our holes, and our percentage. It's the same question, so I'm not going to go through all of that again. But in this case, when you're looking at it, you know that 300 is going to be a whole or a total. That's the total number or the whole amount of friends. Okay, 10%, well that should be fairly simple. That's our percentage. And now in this case, when we're looking for how many have blue feathers and how many don't, we're looking for the part. So now, if we put together our tape diagram, we can put our percentages on one part and we can put our actual numbers on the other. All right, so here, I know that my first number would have to be zero. Logically, that makes sense. My whole is 300. Okay, and then I'm trying to find 10%. So I want to know my whole percent for 100, or I'm sorry, for percentages would be 100. So when we talk about the whole for percent, think about a test. If you get the whole test right, that's 100%. So your whole should always line up across from 100%. That's the all. So if we were talking about uh, what is 100% of Pat's friends, well, that would be 300 Okay, and then obviously we start at 0% as well. So now here, I'm looking for 10%. So the nice thing is 300 and 10, and 10 both lend themselves nicely and they can be divided. So we can actually break this up into 10. So if I break it up into 10 though, so if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, down here. So that's 10. So I know that there's 10 boxes. So each of these 10 boxes has to rem represent the same. So if I have 300 and I divide it by 10, I know that each box has to represent 30. So here I have 10%, and that is going to be equal to 30 birds. And then I have 20%. And that's going to be equal to 60 birds. Okay, so I can just keep going. So each of these boxes is worth, each of these boxes represents 30 birds. So 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270. Okay, so now I know that 10% lines up with the 30. So I know that 10% is equal to 30. I still got the same answer, but this is how you can look at it using a tape diagram. So 10% is represented by 30 birds. Well then here, I can also see that there's 270 birds. And I can also figure out, well, if there, there are 270 birds that don't have blue feathers, what percentage is that? In this case, if I keep counting by tens, I know that I get to 90. So I know that 90% of his friends don't have blue feathers, which makes sense because if 10% do, then 100 minus 10 should be 
90. So 90% should be equal to your 270. So you know that you're doing everything correctly here based on how your numbers are lining up. Again, you're going to have plenty of practice with this, so just make sure you're taking your time. You do have to be able to represent what's going on visually, and I strongly encourage you to do it with a tape diagram because drawing 100 grids is excruciatingly painful. Drawing 10 boxes is much better than having to draw 100 over and over again. So now that we've taken a look at what's going on when we're doing this, let's look at how we can set it up as a proportion or as an equation. So we spent an entire lesson already on proportions and equations, so we already have a good idea. We know that with a proportion, the ratio on the left is equal to the, propor or the ratio on the right in order for them to be proportional. And then from our proportions, we can actually make equations. So this lends itself nicely to be able to use the information in here to set up an equation or a proportion. Now, we talked about percentages and how percentages aren't numbers. They represent numbers, but when you say 45%, that doesn't mean 45. So 45% is representing a different number. So in this case, let's look at our problem. So we have 45% of Mama Patty's hats are blue. If she has 20 hats, how many are blue and how many are not blue? So again, let's look at the questions. How many are not blue? How many are blue? All right, and we are going to have to answer two questions here, so we need to make sure that we're answering them correctly. So we want to know how many are blue and how many are not blue. And then if we box our important numbers, we know that 45, and I'm going to actually box the percent. Now I know 45% isn't a number, but we're going to have to make it into one in order to solve our problem. So in this case, it is an important number that we have to use. Okay, And we also know that she has 20 hats. Now this is where we want to make sure that we know our pieces really well. So 45% is obviously our percent. Now 20, is that her total amount of hats or is that a partial amount of hats? So it says here, if she has 20 hats, based on the way that the sentence is set up, it tells us that 20 is the total. It's the whole amount of hats. So 20 is our whole and, and 45 is our percent. And I'm going to write that underneath just so we don't forget later on. So now, when I'm looking at this, this is saying 45% of 20. So if you look here, it says 45% of Mama Patty's hats. Well, 20 is what represents Mama Patty's hats. That's the number of hats that she has. Now we said 45% isn't a number, but we can write, as it, write it as a number. Uh, by either changing it to a fraction or a decimal. So a percent means out of 100. So we know that we can write it as 45 hundredths or 45 over 100. We know of always tells us to multiply. So that could be very helpful when it comes to our equation. And we know 20 is how many hats we have. It's our whole. So again, if you look at how the problem is set up, it's percentage and whole, and we're looking for the part. So again, there's two ways that we can set this up. If we're going to set it up as a multiplication problem, we're going to set it up as an equation. So we're going to take our percent, written as a decimal, we're going to multiply it by the number that we have, and that's going to give you the numerical value of the percentage. Okay, to make this a little bit easier, let's actually change this. Instead of saying the number that you have, your whole or total. And then this is going to give you your part. If we set it up as a proportion, you guessed it, we're going to set it up using fraction form. So if I set it up as a proportion, I know that 45% means that 45 means 45 per every 100. 
and then we're looking for the part, and then down here, it would go over the hole. So let's take this, oops, and write it that way. And actually, instead of putting an X, let's put in, and I did that backwards, part, just checking to see if you're paying attention. So your percent over 100 is going to be your part out of your whole. Think about it. 45% is part of 100. So your parts are lining up across from one another and your holes are lining up across from one another, just like you did on your tape diagram. Okay, and then from here, you just solve as normal. So you know how to solve equations and you know how to solve proportions. So really the hardest part is figuring out, is it a part, a whole, or a percent? So let's look at Mama Patty's. So for Mama Patty's, we said that she had 20 hats, and that was our total. And then we had 45%, which is obviously our percent. So to set this up, we would set it up part over whole equals part over whole. And if you want to have something off to the side to remind, remind you, part over, over whole equals part over whole. One of them being your percentage, one of them being your actual numbers that you're working with. So in this case, my part is 45 out of 100, and that gets set equal to I don't know the part, that's what I'm looking for, out of 20 hats. I know to solve that my cross products need to be equal, so I can set it up by saying 100x is equal to 45 times 20. 100x is equal to 900, because 45 times 2 is 90, add that 0 at the end, it's 900. If I divide both sides by 100, I get x equals 9. Okay, so looking at this, I know then that if 20% of her hats are blue, now let me just go back and double check, I want to make sure that that was the case. Okay, so 45% of her hats are blue. So 9 of Mama's hats are blue. But that's only one question. We want both answers. So now we can just look at it and say, okay, well, 20 minus 9 gives me 11. So 9 of Mama's hats are blue, and 11 are not blue. So you don't have to set the proportion back up to solve but you can just to double check your work if you want to. If you look at this, it looks very familiar. When you look at how you do your percentages, when you talk at, about tests, you end up doing something like this, except for you take your fraction and you turn it into a decimal, and then you take that decimal and you turn it into a percent. So all of this, and you're working with that 100 at the end, all of this all comes together. It's just different ways of approaching the problem. The biggest part I can say is making sure that you set up your proportion correctly. Now, with the equation, again, we know that we have our total and our percent up here, and we know that it's our percent times our whole gives us our part. But we have to write the percent as a decimal. So I know that 45% turns into 45 hundredths. Oh, look at that. It's exactly what it turned into up there. And then I'm going to multiply that by my whole, which in this case is 20, and that should give me my part. If you go and take your calculator and do 45 hundredths times 20, and I can go ahead and show you that. So 0 decimal 4, 5, and if I multiply that by 20, I get 9. So again, it's the exact same thing. I got the same answer. I just have two different ways of doing it. 
So again, you can set it up any way that you want to. I am going to require that you practice both ways and I am going to require that you can do the tape diagram and give a visual of what's going on. We find that that really helps students grasp what's actually happening with percentages and not just allow them to fly through it and just slap numbers down. So we want to make sure you understand what's going on here. So that way when we bring it into money and stuff like that, you have a better idea of how it's going to work in the real world. So here you have three questions, and if you look at the first one, it asks you to write a proportion. And then the second one asks you to do it as an equation. And then the third one is completely up to you, but you need to make sure that you have one or the other. If you want to do both because you want to get some more practice, that's absolutely fine. You make sure that when you go through that you also identify your part, your whole, and your percentage. Make sure you put your pieces where they belong and you will absolutely have success when you're working through problems like these. As always, if you have any questions, please be sure to write them down or email me so we can go over them in class.